There are so many AI tools out there for academia and research, but these are some of the ones that I think will give you an unfair advantage. The first one is map this. So it's map-this.com. And this turns your notes or your PDFs into mind maps. Now here's the thing. I'm not a huge fan of using external tools outside of a big large language model like ChatGPT, Perplexity, because nowadays you can upload your PDF to those and you can get um, any answers you want and a summary and that sort of stuff. But this does something a little bit different and super powerful that I think you should know about. So down here, essentially you create a mind map. So you can upload your PDF, generate a mind map, save or share it, that's it. So when you log in, it looks like this and you get 50 um, credits, which is free, but you do have to pay if you want more than that. But essentially when you put in a new PDF, you will end up getting um, a few options. You wanna look for, you know, mind maps around a certain keyword or a certain phrase, you can do that. You can also just copy and paste any notes you've got in there and also AI magic, so you can create an, a mind map for any topic using AI, which is nice. But I uh, have already gone ahead and created this mind map. Now I like using mind maps for review articles, because look at this one, advances in organic photovoltaic cells, a comprehensive review, it's big, it's 26 pages, it's got loads and loads of information, but really, I want to know the themes in this paper. If I'm new to a research field, or I want to see if there's any sort of like new frontiers that I should be knowing about and researching into, then I can use a mind map. So I put that PDF in and this is what it created. I think this is probably one of the best tools for creating a mind map for um, any sort of like peer reviewed review article. Because look, in the middle, we've got the actual renewable energy and PV cell technology. And then we've got the different branches which are organized by color. So here, the first one we go, we go historical evolution of PV and solar cells. Then we've got the introduction and the importance. So those th these are things that we would need to know about about um, if, uh, you know, if we were very, very new to the field. But down here, organic... <coughs> But down here, organic photovoltaic cells. So you can go in and you can see, look, you've got device structures, you've got performance and efficiency, it connects down here to materials. So we've got encapsulation materials, we've got all of these things that really just capture a research field. And I think it is one of the best ways to do that quickly. I'm a visual person, I love seeing a mind map and I can click here and also add notes and type a summary of what you want. In the future, they're talking about adding AI generated notes of particular, um, you know, sections of this mind map. But I think even at the moment, as it stands, it's a great tool for getting an overview of that really annoying and large new field that you want to get into. Go check it out. If you're struggling to keep up with all of these AI tools for academia and research, don't worry, I have a course for you. It's this, become a master academic writer with AI apps. And throughout the course, we go through the different important things to add to your toolkit for academic writing using AI tools. We talk about the seven pillars of a solid academic toolkit. We've got the ground rules for using AI, and then we've got AI search engine recommendations, mapping, how to use them, reading, multi document chat, which we'll talk about later in this video as well, drafting papers, everything you need to know about making AI work for you and your academic writing, go check it out. One of the questions that keeps on coming up on this channel is how do I chat to a number of PDF documents? Because throughout a PhD, throughout a research career, you end up with loads and loads of documents, maybe a thousand that you need to be across or that you're at least you need to be a little bit familiar with. Well, there aren't many options, but I think this is probably one of the best ones at the moment, and that is DocuMind. We got DocuMind.chat, and here we've got ask more from your PDF with AI. So it's not just a chat with a single PDF. I think chatting with multiple documents is where this shines and where it does something better than anyone else. So you can build up any PDF, and then you can talk to PDFs with AI. Okay, this is all of the stuff. And the one thing I found really interesting here is you can also generate content. So you can unlock your content creation potential by effortlessly um, streamlining the process of generating articles from your PDFs. So you could put in a load of PDFs and then say, hey, create an article that touches on all the topics in these PDFs. I think that is really powerful. So when you log in, you've got this interface here. You can upload documents. The first thing you need to do is go and put in all of your documents. Upload documents, and you can drag and drop them in here. You can also sort them into folders where you can select a folder and that sort of stuff. So that's perfectly good if you want to separate your different themes in your research into different folders. Brilliant. Now. 
This is where they all are, documents. You can see they're all down here. And we can ask particular questions about you know this particular um, paper. So you can, can talk to individual documents. So here you can see we are in conversation with a single article, vertical stratification and interfacial blah, 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 whatever it is that I wrote on many, many years ago. And then we've got here, chat with all documents. And this is where it's most powerful. So you click here and you can see you've got conversation with all documents. And I've got a few questions here. What are some of the best electro made and down here or oh, look I ran out of credits but bah, bah, but then I paid for some for this video you're welcome what are the best electrodes made and down here you can see it's gone out to all of my different files and it's gone and looked across to see where the best electrodes are being made and you can see it gives me an actual number from the actual uh, references that it's got it from so this can be used up to 1000 documents if you pay the big money but if you are just a student who wants to you know ask if, across a few hundred documents then you can use the lower tier but uh, i think this is a really really great tool for asking many questions about a load of documents. You can also click here, which is generate with GPT-4. And so that means that not only then can you ask to find information, but you can also generate information, new text, new large language model generated text from the information in your documents, which I really like. So um, on OPV devices and nanoparticles. Now we wait. So it's used my files here to generate this introduction. In recent years, organic photovoltaic devices, blah, blah, blah. One, one promising avenue is incorporation of nanoparticles into their research and nanoparticle-based OPV devices, blah, blah, blah. So I know because this is all my research that this information is really in the documents I've uploaded. So you can use it to generate stuff. You can use it to search to find important information. I think this will change the way that you interact with a large number of PDFs, but also generating text from those PDFs. Well done, DocuMind. I don't think it gets any better than that. The last one I think you should know about is Recast. Recast looks like this, and essentially it turns any web page into a podcast. I was really nervous when I sort of like started using this because I thought it was just gonna generate a big block of text and then read it to me in that really boring robot AI voice. I am a robot and AI voice. These are the things you need to know about this page. But it doesn't. It actually produces a nice conversation between two AI entities, which is actually a pleasure to listen to. So. If you head over to Recast, you end up with this once you've logged in. But this isn't really interesting to me because I'm a scientist. I don't need entertainment. I need facts. So the first thing you need to do if you want to use this outside of this interface is go here and use one of the extensions. So whether or not you've got Chrome, Safari, or iOS, that's fine. This is a review on perovskite solar cells, materials, and applications. It is a big one. It is a massive, massive review article. And I was interested to see how well it did. It actually generated generating text and a conversation from really technical stuff. So if we head over, you can see this is what it generated. Um, by the way, you go here and you click on this and then all you do is recast it and then it will send it to this folder here for you to listen to later. It took a little bit of time because I'm not in pro, but if you pay for it, apparently that speeds up the priority for you. Uh, nonetheless, this is what we've ended up with. So you can see here, you get a summary, you get the article and you get the length. So in one minute and 38 seconds you'll get two hosts samantha and paul talking about this solar cell so if we listen to it it also doesn't damage the environment the consumption of energy has been increasing globally so the need for renewable energy sources like solar energy is becoming more important the article explains that there have been different generations someone of else talking so it's nice to actually have the change of voices in there you can also see that uh, you've got this transcript down here so you can read it now where would i use this i think i would probably use this when i am traveling when i'm commuting i'd put up you know i'd go and search for um, articles like i did here then i just click here and say recast it and then when i've got a little bit of downtime whether i'm commuting walking just in the lab even and i can put headphones in although I think nowadays you're not allowed to put uh, headphones on in the lab because it's dangerous but if you want to break those rules you can actually just listen to this in the lab um, you know and it's kind of a nice way of absorbing content whilst also doing other things I mean that's why we love podcasts right so recast is a really great tool if you want to listen to your research articles but not in a boring way in an actually sort of like kind of interesting way a conversation between two people love it go check out recast if you like this video go check out this one where I talk about the 12 best AI tools that are completely free that you should be using. Go check it out.